Cisco Certified Network Associate Day 39. Welcome back everyone. I'm Imran Rafai, your trainer for this entire series. Today we're going to discuss switch stacking versus chassis aggregation and this is part of ICMD2 topic. So without wasting much time, let's get straight into today's class and before we go ahead, click on that subscribe button and then click on that bell icon to be notified whenever we update a new video and also please click on that like button under this video which would make us very very happy um, we have our uh, company con uh, social media contacts on the left my personal social media contacts on the right and my email address is given uh, here so anybody who wants to contact me please feel free to contact me on imran.rafai at nwking.org like I said today we're going to look at uh, the benefits of switch stacking versus chassis aggregation uh, this is part uh, 1.6 of ICND2 exam topics. So, in a typical world, uh, when you're looking at uh, designing a network, uh, we would uh, let's say you you are designing a new network and uh, you come up with a design layout and then you realize uh, that each floor you need about 100 computers. Uh, so each that means all the access switches so let's say in this this is these are access switches and these are distribution switches if you know the Cisco three layer models a core distribution and access layer uh, devices so uh, on each floor we need hundred devices now you need to make a decision uh, between two things how, how are you going to uh, achieve this because each switch uh, on an access layer switch you would have about 24 ports so if you want hundred ports right you need to have five uh, 24 port switches right so you need to decide whether you need to go that way we have more numbers of uh, small switches or you have one large switch where you have uh, maybe a switch with 100 ports right so it's, it's definitely not part of your ICND 1 ICND 2 to discuss uh, such large switches but you can get a switch with 100 ports that's possible so we need to make that decision whether we need to go with a lot of uh, small switches or one large switch, right? Uh, both of them have their own advantages and disadvantages. The advantages of having one switch with 100 ports is that you need to have one, you just have to manage only one switch. You don't have to uh, manage 10 different switches or 5 different switches, right? But the same point uh, the disadvantage of having that one switch is there's only one single point of contact, right? So th that single point of contact is if anything fails on that switch, the whole network goes down. But on the other hand, if you have five switches with 24 ports, uh, if one of the switches fail, right, there's a chance of one switch failing, but there's <laughs> very little chance of all five switches failing. But let's say one switch fails, the four switches are still working. So that means the remaining ports are still working. So your entire network is not down. But the, the disadvantage, like I said, is you have to have uh, to manage five different switches, right? So you have disadvantage and advantage in either case. That's something that you need to make a decision. So typically what you would do uh, is when you have, let's say, in, in our example here, so you have A1, A2, A3, and A4 are four access layer switches, and these four access layer switches are connected to two distribution layer, uh, layer three switches, right? Now, each of these access layer switches uh, have to be connected to both the distribution layer switches. So if you know the Cisco three layer architecture, we, we spoke about that in one of our old videos. It tells that you have the low switches or the low grade or low power switches on access layers. Then you have a little higher capacity switches in distribution. And then you have the really, really powerful switches sitting on your core, right? So uh, here in this case, we're only looking at access layer and distribution layer. So each of these access layer switches are connected uh, to both these uh, distribution layer switches. So if you only consider A1, a1 has a, a wire connected to D2 and D1. So these three, right, between these three, one of the ports, because of STP, one of the port will get blocked. STP will block one of the ports. Similarly, A2 also, one of the ports will get blocked. STP, again, A3, one of the ports will get blocked because of STP. And A4, one of the ports will get blocked uh, due to STP. So technically, uh, you're not using the entire bandwidth of uh, switches. So, so you have uh, two links, one of the link is always down, right? So that's that's one of the problems. So typically when you have 
four switches and let's assume um, this is on the same floor so typically they would be sitting on one rack like this so you have uh, switch one switch two switch three switch four right each of these switches are uh, these are all switches so you have four five six and seven switch right so you have seven switches so like this uh, when you have access layers you normally have switches sitting on a rack now the problem is like i said because there's so many uh, 24 these are all 24 port switches so 24 into what uh, here you have seven of them so or, or sorry eight of them right one two three four five six seven eight right so that is eight into 24 ports that's 192 ports so you have 192 ports in this case but the problem is you have to have uh, first you need to have uh, a management IP for each of these uh, devices right so each of these devices will have a management IP it is SPI is created but uh, each of these uh, devices will have uh, multiple VLANs so you need to have you want to manage according to VLAN each of those VLANs will have to have a management IP right so these are all the administrative headaches that you need to have there is a way you can use something called switch stacking now what switch stacking does is uh, it creates these uh, let's say these eight switches they try to combine them and make one logical switch so you have eight physical switches but they would act like one logical switch and one of these switches would be a master right let's assume this is a master and administrator as an administrator you only connect to this switch you make changes whatever changes that is applied to all these uh, switches and all these switches will start acting like one device that's what it is uh, what switch stacking is so switch stacking is a way where you uh, of course switch stacking Cisco has many stacking technologies but the one that we're going to discuss is called a flex stack so this is a flex stack module uh, at the back of your switch uh, there is a port where you can insert these modules so you install this mod module and these modules have two links so what it, what you do is you connect multiple devices so in this case you have two devices so let's say even if you have uh, three and four so what you do is you connect these devices in series so you have this to switch two switch two to switch three switch three to switch four and switch four you put a loop back to switch one so this is goes in a ring formation so technically all the devices are connected to the, the loop so it, it becomes a ring right now once you do this one of the device is uh, becomes a master right uh, and then all the others are going to be slaves so these are all slaves and as an administrator you contact the master and you make changes to the master and all the devices are going to work right so for all practical purpose after this uh, this switch right the switch a1 a2 a3 and a4 will start acting like one switch so if let's say there is a uh, uh, traffic that's coming on A2 and let's assume A1 is the master so if there is a traffic coming on A1, A2 and it has to go through a physical link in A3 these three devices will actually be physical devices A1, A2 and A3 will be working because the master is the one that controls all the device so if the master is down the entire or the entire logical switch is down right but if one of the switch let's say switch a3 physically is down a2 and a4 and a1 all these three switches will still work as a logical switch right so that's what it is so once that happens uh, this switch now starts acting like one switch right so in in earlier case we had six switches and you had to manage six different switches and six different STP processes, six different configurations to manage. So all that were really, really a uh, headache that you had to do. So this is for you think about what would happen if you have, let's say, 100 switches to manage. To get over that, we do what we discussed, uh, the switch stacking. So once it's one switch is stacked, they act like one logical access layer switch. And with a little bit of configuration of what we learned in our last video, we can start, if you remember, each switch has one connection to D1. So there are four switches and there are four connections to D1. So you can combine those D1s and make that into a ether channel. All the connections going to D2 can become an ether channel and d1 to d2 already there is an ether channel right so now these are all in ether channel and technically if you see it is as if there are only three devices and you would only have one ether channel right which will get blocked 
and this will the STP will block this one channel and still you have uh, made use of uh, these devices so what happens in this case is switch stacking gives you benefit where you only manage one switch and that switch manages the entire logical switch so as an administrator your overhead has reduced so there is another technology called chassis aggregation now the difference between switch switch um, stacking and chassis aggregation is one for switch stacking you need to have a special module like we saw here you have to get a module like this this is a Cisco flex stack module there is flex stack plus and there are many other modules uh, which is not part of your ACND uh, 1 or ACND 2 or your CCNA so don't worry about the uh, technical details about those stacking solutions but just know that for switch stacking you need to have an external module that needs to be installed on your switch to get that solution but the other technology is chassis aggregation now for chassis aggregation you typically would be doing chassis aggregation in a big switch now this is a Cisco 6500 uh, switch now these switches are huge switches and each of these switches let's say uh, these are called the line cards you have one two three four line cards of 24 ports so that's almost uh, 96 ports here you can add more line cards here if you want right so then you can add more ethernet ports now these are called the supervisor card right supervisor cards uh, are the brain for this whole switch so this is where all the brain happens so you can see that these switches these these high end switches already have redundancy so you have two uh, supervisors so both of them cannot fail at the same time one of them will even if one fails the other can take over and uh, continue the operation of the switch so these are really really expensive switches uh, are normally used in distribution layer or the core layer of your network these also have two power uh, uh, source right so you have this is the power input this is another power input you can connect this to one line maybe from a different substation right and you can connect this to another line from a different substation so basically both of them let's say power fails in this substation you still have a backup coming from another substation which will still make sure the switch is still running so these are really high-end switches now again going back to our old diagram so you see uh, d1 uh, and d2 they are already uh, in ether channel normally when you do ether channel you know that you're connecting to uh, the ethernet ports right so you're connecting ethernet ports and you're doing ether channels uh, that's the thing with chassis aggregation you really don't need any more extra modules you can make use of your ethernet ports and create chassis aggregation so basically you would connect uh, from line card one uh, to line card one and then another line card two to a line card two and then you can take those things you can combine them together to form a logical distribution layer switch again what happens is you know that a1 had a line to uh, d1 and d2 so technically a1 had two interfaces so you could put those you can you know do something called as a multi chassis uh, ether channel program so you can make use of that technology and create uh, ether channel so a2 also has an ether channel a3 has an ether channel a4 has an ether channel and you would see that these are now working point to point right there is no loop creation here these are point to point and that's making use of uh, all the available links without having any problem so chassis aggregation is what you do and typically chassis aggregation versus uh, uh, switch switch stacking uh, chassis aggregation normally is done with higher end switches compared to uh, an access layer switch which is not a very powerful device now if you do switch stacking as well so if you do chassis aggregation for your distribution layer and if you do uh, switch stacking for your access layer switches you be, do a little bit of configuration you can actually create an eight channel ether channel right so you have an eight port eight link ether channel right it would technically be like uh, a single line so you have a distribution switch and you have an access switch and there's one line connecting between the two it is just that now and STP obviously will work and both of them would be in forwarding state they'll be forwarding and this will be forwarding both of them are happy and our uh, network is actually being used with very high it's an eight link ether channel so that's a very high capacity bandwidth there so th this is a very short video 
uh, explaining the differences or uh, the benefits and disadvantages of uh, chassis aggregation and switch stacking. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, if you have any questions regarding this video, please feel free to contact me right into us and we would be able to help you. If you have, uh, you could also comment on this video right below and we will try to reach back to you and help you. Thank you so much. We'll see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.